Good day. Our next topic is on reasoning. Now we'll discuss two types of reasoning, the inductive and deductive reasoning. Now what is inductive reasoning? It is the process of reaching a general conclusion by examining specific examples. So meaning we will start with some specific patterns or specific observations before making our generalization or general conclusion. And our conclusion that is based on inductive reasoning is called a conjecture and it may or may not be correct. So we have example one, an application of inductive reasoning. So use inductive reasoning to predict the next number in each of the following lists. So this is an example of inductive reasoning because we are basing our next term by the previous or with the previous numbers. So we are just finding a pattern. So after finding the pattern, we can then generalize what is really the pattern is all about. So say for example, we have these two patterns. So for letter A, we have this. So what must be the next number? So if you notice, for each two consecutive numbers here, their difference is 3 or their gap is 3. Thus, the next number should be 18. Okay, so we have 3, 3, 3, 3. So 15 plus 3 is 18. Now how about letter B? We have this. Okay. The differences between two consecutive numbers are as follows. We have 3 minus 1 is 2. 6 minus 3 is 3. 10 minus 6 is 4. 15 minus 10 is 5. If you notice, the differences keeps on increasing by 1. So based on this pattern, the next number should be the next number minus 15, which is which must be equal to 6. So solving for x, that is x must be 21. Example 2. Consider the following procedure. Pick a number, multiply the number by 8, add 6 to the product, divide the sum by 2, and subtract 3. Complete the above procedure for several different numbers. Use inductive reasoning to make a conjecture about the relationship between the size of the resulting number and the size of the original number. So this time, I will just pick three numbers and then we'll compare the results after following this procedure. So for the first number, I picked number 2, multiply by 8, 16 plus 6 is 22, divided by 2, 11, and then last subtract by 3, and we have 8. Now let's pick another number, say 3, so times 8 is 24, plus 6 is 30, divided by 2 is 15, Minus 3 is 12. And last, say for example our number is 6, multiply it by 8, so 48 plus 6 is 54, divided by 2 is 27, minus 3 is 24. Now let's compare the 3. For the first part, our original number is 2, the resulting number is 8. Next is we have original number is 3, the resulting number is 12. Last, the original number is 6, and the resulting number is 24. Now, by just looking at this summary, we can say that the relationship between the resulting number and the original number is just... The, original num uh, the resulting number is just a quadruple of the original number. So, meaning this is 4 times 2. This is 4 times 3, and this is 4 times 6. So therefore, the given procedure produces a number that is 4 times the original number. Okay. So if you want to make some generalization, you can also do this, that for any number, you just follow this. Okay. So at the end, at the, of the procedure we have here at the end, 4a. 
So therefore, the given procedure again produces a number that is 4 times the original number. Example 3. So let's study this table about the pendulum. On the first column, we have the length of pendulum, and on the right column, we have the period of pendulum. And we're going to use this table to answer these two questions. Number one, if a pendulum, or letter A, if a pendulum has a length of 49 units, what is its period? Now let's study the table. So what can you observe? Okay, this is the observation. We can observe that the period of the pendulum is just the square root of the length of the pendulum. Okay? So thus, the pendulum with a length of 49 units will have a period of square root of 49, which is equal to 7. So 7 heartbeats. Letter B. If the length of a pendulum is quadrupled or times 4, what happens to its period? So let's study. Okay, on the first table, if we have this 1, the length is 1 and quadrupled times 4, the period becomes 1 to 2. Okay, next, if our period is 4, multiply it by 4, we have 16. Now let's look at the period. From 2, it became, or it becomes 4. And last, from 9 multiplied by 4, we have 36. Then the, its period is from 3 to 6. By observation, we can see that the if the pendulum is quadrupled, or the length of the pendulum is quadrupled, its period is doubled. So 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6. So quadrupling the length of a pendulum doubles its period. Note again, conclusions based on inductive reasoning may be incorrect. So for example, Miss De La Cruz wears white on Monday. Again on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, what color does she wear on Friday? We cannot say that she will wear white. She can wear any other clothes or color of clothes or t-shirt or any dress. Okay, that is why the reason or the conclusions based on inductive reasoning may be incorrect because we always make our conclusion based on our observation or patterns. Okay, now let's go to deductive reasoning. Now deductive reasoning is the process of reaching a conclusion by applying general assumptions, procedures, or principles. Meaning the conclusion here is very strong because we come from a general assumption and then we apply this to a specific assumption. Okay, let's go. Let's have some examples. Example 1. So, all birds can fly. Tweety is a bird. Therefore, Tweety can fly. This is an example of a, deduct of a deductive reasoning because we started with a general case. All birds can fly. Okay, and we apply this to a specific bird, which is Tweety, or who is Tweety. So therefore, Tweety can fly. Next, every Filipino of age 18 and above can vote. Juan is a 24-year-old Filipino. Therefore, Juan can vote. Because again, we started with a general case. Every Filipino of age 18. And then we go to a specific Filipino, which is Juan. So therefore, Juan can vote. Again, from general to specific. Example 2. Solving a logic puzzle. Each of four neighbors, Sian, Maria, Sarah, and Brian, has a different occupation. Editor, banker, chef, or dentist. 
From the following clues, determine the occupation of each neighbor. So number one, Maria gets home from work after the banker but before the dentist. Number two, Sarah, who is the last to get home from work, is not the editor. Number three, the dentist and Sarah leave for work at the same time. And number four, the banker lives next door to Brian. So le let's examine each one of these clues. So we have this table. So number one, Maria gets home from work after the banker but before the dentist. This means that Maria is not the banker and Maria is not the dentist. So we have this excess. Next clues. Number two, Sarah, who is the last to get home from work, is not the editor. And number three, the dentist and Sarah leave for work at the same time. So look at this. For number two, Sarah is not the editor. So we have this red X. And for number three, we have this blue X. Sarah is not the dentist. Number four, the bunker lives next door to Brian. So therefore, the bunker is not Brian, or Brian is not the bunker. Okay, so we have this table. Now let's examine number one and two at the same time. Maria gets home from work after the bunker, but before the dentist. And number two, Sarah, who is the last to get home from work, is not the editor. So this means that Sarah is the last to get home. So this implies that Sarah is not the banker. Okay, because the banker is not the last one to go home. So we have this. Sarah is not the banker, this yellow one. Okay, so this means that Sian is the bunker. And Sarah is the chef. Okay, so we have these two. So if you look at this, let's rewind. So Sian is the bunker and at the same time Sarah is the chef. So from this slide... We have, therefore, Sarah is the chef, correct? So we have this. And then, Sian is the bunker. So we have this. Now, since each of them has one occupation, so it means that for this column, we can mark X for, for these cells. So we mark Xs. Okay, so we have this. And of course, for Cian, we can mark this as X, or you can simply check Maria as the editor. Because all of these are Xs, then we can say that Maria is the editor. Okay, so Maria is the editor. Okay. So since Maria is the editor, of course, the last one, Maria is the uh, Brian is now the dentist. Okay, so we have the first one is Sarah is the chef. Then we have Cian is the banker. Then Maria is the editor. So therefore, Brian is the dentist. Okay, now determine whether the following are inductive or deductive. Number one, I heard I heard lots of barking last night. The neighbor's dog must have been pretty upset about something since he rarely barks. So the, ans the answer for this is inductive. The reason is the speaker is relying on a collection of experiences to draw an inference. Number two, all dogs bark. Fido is a dog, so he barks. So it comes from... A strong premise that is a general premise so this is deductive 
So the premise guarantee the conclusion. So from a general to specific. Number three, no book in no book in English begins numbering its pages on a left hand page. This is a book in English, therefore it will begin its numbering on a right hand page. So this is a general case. No book in English begins numbering its pages on the left hand page. So from general to a specific case. So this is again deductive. The conclusion follows necessarily from the premise. Number four, based on a survey of 3,300 randomly selected registered voters, 56.2% indicate that they will vote for the incumbent officials in the upcoming election. Therefore, approximately 56% of the votes in the upcoming election will be for the incumbent. So this is a general case. Okay, so this is not a this is not a general case. So it means that this is inductive. The conclusion does not follow necessarily from uh, from the premise. The conclusion follow with some probability. Number five: All mollusks are invertebrates. Snails are mollusks, so snails must be invertebrates. So again, here we started with a general case all, and then go with a specific case so this is deductive the premise guarantee the conclusion a child examines 10 tulips all of which are red and concludes that all tulips must be red so this is inductive because the generalization is just based on only 10 tulips okay, it's not all tulips number seven Jack is taller than Jill. Jill is taller than Joey. Therefore, Jack is taller than Joey. So this is a general case that Jack is really taller than Jill and Jill is really taller than Joey. So this is deductive. The premise, which is in general sense, guarantee the conclusion. Number eight, cats routinely kill kill birds and mice there is a cut so it almost assuredly kills birds and mice so this is inductive number nine no whales live in fresh water and the lake is a fresh water so there are no whales living there so again this is a general sense no whales so this is a deductive reasoning from a general case to a specific case. So the premise guarantee the conclusion. And last, in the sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, the next term is going to be 18. This is inductive because again, this is based on pattern or observation. So the conclusion is based on pattern and observation. So in general, if we say inductive reasoning, it is from specific to general. And of course, the conclusion is not that strong because it might be false. While the deductive reasoning is from general to specific and the conclusion is very strong because we come from a general case and apply it to a specific conclusion.